Hey everyone, Christy Arnett here, and I've got Adam Junglin in the studio today. Thank you so much for coming by. Not a problem. And you guys might know him better as A Junglin7, is that right? <laughs> That's on Poker Stars, right? Yeah, and now you're 21 now. Congratulations, by the way, you're turning 21. And Thank you. Ready to get into the U.S. Um, like live scene? Yep, no more. Well, I'll still be going to Europe and maybe you know outside the United States to play, mm -hmm. but you know, let's open some doors. Awesome. Well, today, for this strategy piece, I thought we should talk about playing big pairs in tournaments in all stages with all different stacks because the reason why I thought that was um, Niagara. Tell mm -hmm. me about that last hand that you played. <laughs> um, I actually busted early level two in Niagara. Um, we started with 30,000 and I started the hand with, um, I believe, 25. But I guess we'll see uh, as I tell the hand because stacks get in. Um, it was 100, 200, the level with no ante, and I opened under the gun. Uh, to 525 and got three callers in position and then the big blind made 3.7 which was extremely large raise right. that really just screams ace king if he had a hand like two queens or two kings um i'd assume he'd make it 2300 or 2500 mm -hmm. not 3.7 um so i just flat called uh if i were to re-raise there i think it kind of makes my hand face up right it turns my hand face up uh and also there are other players behind me uh that weren't the greatest players, and I thought I could get some other callers behind me with weaker holdings. Anyways, uh, so we got heads up to the flop of King Queen Rag with two diamonds, which normally isn't the greatest flop in the world for two aces, especially against an opponent who re-raises you. They mm -hmm. can easily flop. Uh, Kings or queens. Right. right. But I was very, you know, based on his pre-flop raise size, and there's so many combinations of ace king. Uh, I decided I would go with the hand. He laid out for uh, I forget the exact bet size. Uh, Six thousand. It was and I shoved for 20 total okay. and he called ace king and uh, spiked his two outer and I lost oh. but I've just flat <laughs> called because again re-raising there really does turn my hand face up and um, yeah you don't always have to just get all in pre-flop with aces right and then his <laughs> bet even on the flop if he did flop you know top set or middle set it seems like he wouldn't bet that that strong I mean the pot was pretty big but 6,000 seems, I mean, compared to your stack size, it seems pretty... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you'd think he'd lead for like 4,500 or mm -hmm. a smaller bet with trying to induce me to shove with, you know, weaker than top set or middle set if he had that. How were you playing up to that point? Um, pretty tight because our table was, had a lot of players that weren't capable of folding one pair. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so I was just waiting for a hand, uh, you know, to double up on, you know, get three streets early. Preferably get three streets of value. However, you know you get value bets in, and uh, I just ended up getting it all in on the flop with uh, aces against ace king. For players who are starting with a deep stack in the beginning levels of of a tournament, how how would you recommend playing big pairs in position? Would you just play it pretty aggressively? Well, it really depends on the opponents and mm -hmm. how deep you are. Um, against tough opponents, they're not going to be stacking off uh, with an over pair against a set early on so you kind of have to be cautious with your aces early on or aces or kings if mm -hmm. you're like for example at uh, this festa main event you start with 450 big blinds deep um a lot of weaker opponents will go broke with aces to like plus someone's flop middle set um so there's some you know you have to be cautious but against the right opponents you can still bust them with you know aces against their flop top pair okay um, now, the move you made, I mean, just, just calling, flat calling, a re-raise, pre-flop, what kind of players um, would you want to be doing that against, and what kind of players would you rather be shoving with? Um, well, with the sex, we, we were pretty deep when I called it Niagara, but it didn't really matter because his pre-flop raise, you know, almost invited stacks to get in on, after a continuation bet on the flop, right. which also is the reason why I flat called. Uh, I thought that even if he had a hand like ace king or ace queen, he'd be betting the flop the majority of the time, and I could just you know move in and earn more than you know re-raising pre-flop. If you re-raise there, do you think that he folds ace king, or is he kind of a player that? Um, actually, looking back on it now, if I made if I we would have made a smaller re-raise maybe after he makes it 3.7 if I make it 7,500. I'm not sure if he was capable of folding. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, there are other players behind me who hadn't folded to a re-raise all day. So I was still trying to get them in pot as well. Okay. All right, what about when you're deep in a tournament and you've got the bubble approaching? 
and you've got a big stack and across the table is another big stack. You guys might be like leading the tournament or a couple chip leaders. Um, do you want to try and keep the pot small with a big pair or? Um, if it's another sophisticated thinking player, then I'll you know still stack off. Uh, deep in tournaments, are usually not more than like 80 big blinds deep. I'd still stack off like queens or jacks if we like got you know re-raised in mm -hmm. on the bubble and uh, they know they're aware of uh, my image or you know have leveling wars like that. Oh, okay. So how would you protect against someone playing stacks against you? You know what I mean? Like he knows that you don't want to bust out, but you know that he knows that he might not know that you have a big hand. So so you, I mean, how do you how do you defend against that? Is there any way really? Um. Just don't get in weird situations when you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Just saying the situation you're talking about doesn't. Uh, it oh ends God. up being an ego war, right? Which uh, I learned a while ago, and really not worth getting into. <laughs> gotcha. Do you do you have anything else that you would want to add about playing big pairs in tournaments? Um. When the stacks are uh, shallower, specifically online, this this has become pretty standard actually. Uh, someone really re-raising in late position and usually in online tournaments you're like 20 25 bets deep uh, flat calling out position and then going for a check raise on the flop uh, that's become a little standard but against less sophisticated opponents they won't be looking out for it you can still uh, it's still tough if your opponent flops a pair and you know, mm -hmm. just can't get away from it so it's a good way to trap gotcha. when you're shallow now I know a long time ago a lot of players were they got a big hand um, in early position or under the gun, they would limp in and then wait for someone to raise and then re-raise them. Mm -hmm. But now that seems like a line that isn't really profitable anymore because either unless you're like reverse psychology or something like that, like it just seems like a play that every it's been done. You know? It really depends on the table. Um, there's spots where you can limp behind others with pairs if you're very certain the players on the left of you are going to be uh, raising. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I had, had a table like that where if I, you know, people were limping in front of me, I would limp behind with big pairs because uh, my good friend Isaac Haxon was isolating every single time behind on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, uh, at most tables, if you just open limp with uh, a big hand like aces or kings, it's usually better off just raising the pot. Yeah. Alright, well, thank you so much for coming by and talking about playing big pairs because I know it's, you know, it's not always easy, even though you gotta make hands up, <laughs> so. Sure. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful time in Vegas as a 21-year-old. Are you gonna go like to the clubs or anything? Uh, we'll see. I went out to uh, a nice dinner the other night. Um, I got a, if I win this, I'm sure I'll do some celebrating. Nice. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Chris Tierna with Adam Jumlin for Card Player TV.